Okay, welcome folks. Thank you for joining this practice and uh, heartfelt appreciation for those that are able to join us live in the Zoom call. It uh, really feels sweet to uh, chime in and, and uh, see familiar faces and uh, equally sweet to feel see new faces. Um, let me just make sure this is muted. There we go. Oh, sorry. There's just a couple of people coming in, so I, I'm mildly distracted. I let me just get that settled, and then I'll continue. Um, <clears throat> make sure that muted so that it doesn't pop up on the recording. All right. Um, so today. I uh, drove by a public school that's in Salem, actually. It was Salem Public School, which is near us up here. And I saw on their announcement board outside, that's like a, on the sidewalk, this uh, sweet message. It just said, be kind and change the world. And I really, it really caught my attention. It's so simple and sweet and profound and true. And so great that, that the kids are reading that as they're showing up to school and all the neighbors and people like me driving by. Be kind and change the world, you know. It's, uh, it's bizarre how simple that is and how true. It's just so true. Yeah. I, so thank you, Salem Public School, for putting out such an awesome message for all of us. Yeah, and, it, you know, at this time, we are all aware of another wave and upsurge of hatred and ill will, cruelty and violence which is um, since time immemorial that this is part of this life experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now we're seeing an, another version, another wave of this ongoing violence and hatred and ill will. And, and this message, be kind and change the world, it, it sounds, it can, it can just kind of sound a bit saccharine or a bit uh, like, just think about white light and everything will be beautiful. And it's not, that's not what the message is. There's actually profound truth in this, in that the teachings of the Buddha re resonate with this that loving kindness or being kind is the opposite of ill will and hatred. And if we were all really embodying and cultivating and living from, speaking from, acting from the deep intentions of kindness, there would not be war, violence, hatred, judgment, segregation, etc. And uh, so it's actually extremely possible and practical to cultivate this meditative heart quality of how we live of kindness. So um, this practice, the, the, the opposite of it, which traditionally is called the far enemy of loving kindness is ill will and hatred. That's the opposite. They don't coexist. And there's also a, what's called a near enemy or something that seems a lot like loving kindness or friendliness or mm, benevolence it's sometimes called 
it, it can sometimes seem like love or loving kindness, but it's so, it's not, it's, it's different. And this is called the near enemy. The far enemy is ill will and hatred. And the near enemy is conditional love or attached love, where I'll love you if, <laughs> when, I'll love, yeah, so there's like strings attached, it's conditional. And it's seen, you know, it's very close, it, it sounds like love, you know, but it's, it's not this quality of metta that we're talking about. And um, attached love is like this as well, attached, attachment meaning, um, we love something that's mine, mine, this is my, my team, my family, my friends, my group, my uh, race, my country, etc. cetera. Um, which is obviously when there's attachment, this then means there's exclusion, who's being excluded. Yes, thank you so much for sharing this. So. Um, uh, one of our friends on the on the the Zoom group here has shared this uh, reminder that the Dalai Lama was asked what his religion was, and he responded, "Kindness, loving kindness, metta is his religion." So that's uh, thanks for reminding us of that. Yeah. So I um, with these kind of. Uh, feelings that came up today and and there was kind of that there's a Jane Sibri song calling all angels just feeling the need to like bring in our benefactors our our teachers our supports to remind ourselves of what it feels like to be cared for to be seen to be supported and to to bring in these beings into our awareness by using our reflection and imagination and visualization. We'll use all these capacities of our mind to bring in the felt experience and um, develop that for a little while. And then we let that ripple back out to send those, that support, that kindness, that benevolence, that being a good citizen, um, remind ourselves how it feels and then offer it back out into the world. In um, the Pali language, which is the language, the teachings of the Buddha were written down in, uh, there's a word called um, Hitakara. It's for those that like to study these things, it's H-I-T-A-K-A-R-A. Hitakara, Hitakara. There isn't an accent on the I, so I'd have to look at my pronunciation to make sure I'm doing that right, but I won't do that right now. And uh, so this is the word for benefactor. I was curious because in our English language, benefactor these days has kind of come to mean like a financial support. You know, they're your benefactor to a certain cause. It has that connotation. But um, benefactor in the Pali dictionary is desiring another's welfare well wishing the first part of the word hita h-i-t-a means friendly so it's a little bit more this quality of just uh, really wishing for the well-being and well wishing welfare of others all right, I think that's enough of an intro for that. Um, there's much more to say about this practice, but um, much better to do it. <laughs> and um, when we cultivate these qualities of the heart, heart mind or the aware heart, it's important that you practice kindness with your own body. 
So take some time now to adjust your posture. These are practices of awakening. So we do want to have a posture that mm, supports some energy through the spine. Um, when I'm practicing in a chair, I tend not to sit back in the chair because that will, then my head goes forward and I fall asleep quite quickly. So you might want to put a cushion down your back or back of your hips so that you're sitting upright. Some people might prefer practicing laying down. You might like to dim your lights, make your space comfortable. See if you need a shawl or blanket. Getting, getting what you need, any cushions. If you're practicing laying down and still want to also encourage awakening or wakefulness, uh, you might like to lift your forearm up so that it will drop when you're falling asleep. And um, yeah, just get what you need here. See if you need any movements to release any tension or any other supports for the body to be comfortable. And once your body comes into its posture, invite some stillness. Stillness is very important for bringing calm, See where it's helpful for your eyes to rest, whether that's downward with a bit of light coming in or with the eyes closed, or perhaps the eyes resting on something beautiful that's in your space that brings this quality of heartfulness. And then we take time here just to settle into our posture, into meeting ourselves in this moment. Inviting ease and peace into the expression on your face, widening the forehead. Easing. Some find it helpful to have uh, what Thich Nhat Hanh referred to as a half smile or a, this little inward smile. It's not to please anyone else, but just a little brightening at the corners of the mouth that brings some brightness and to the heart and mind. As the face becomes a little more peaceful, just feel into areas of habit tension for you, perhaps in the neck and shoulders, inviting some comfort and ease. The hands relaxing. The belly softening is even just some small degree, whatever amount is possible for you this evening, soft belly. Feel your relationship with the ground. Ground rising up to meet you and hold you and you resting downward with in relationship, earth meeting earth, earth elements meeting.
you are supported. Allow yourself to be supported right now. And now in this practice, we'll also use other capacities of our awareness to bring in some reflection, some memory, some visualization might be helpful for some. To recall, allow yourself to move into some aspect of childhood. Whatever age arises for you does not need to be specific, but we're just reaching into our past experience in a particular way to invite connection with our benefactors. Someone that saw you, supported you, appreciated you. Perhaps protected you, taught you, guided, mentored. This could be an animal companion, a teacher, friend, family. It could be a place in nature. Was there a place that felt safe, supportive? Just trust what comes. And as some being, whether it's a earth being, animal being, human being comes into awareness, just uh, flush out that feeling a little bit. You might have an image of them, a felt experience. It may be someone you never met. And see, how does it feel now to recall in your heart, body, mind? How this being saw you, cared for you. Guided you. And invite them to be near you, perhaps sitting to your side, or we're going to kind of create a, a sense of a circle or people sitting beside us of these benefactors. Perhaps in your heart's mind, you're expressing some gratitude towards them. And then if you like, you can see if there's another person or animal or place or element. And bring them in to be near you. Feel supported right now. Seen. They wished for your well being.
And in this present moment, in this body, heart, mind, right now, what does it feel like to be surrounding yourself with this care, this support? Now we will begin to shift to yourself as an adult. In this present moment, aware of those that see you, recognize you, really wish for your well-being and welfare. Again, this could be a place for you, an animal companion, friend, a teacher, spiritual guide. There may be many or some or one. For now, just really feel one in particular and invite them in to be close with you right now. You are seen, you are supported. You are loved unconditionally. And then you might include teachers, mentors, or guides that you haven't actually met somebody like the Dalai Lama or Martin Luther King that has guided, inspired, taught. Wished for your well-being even though they hadn't personally met you. You felt that sense of love and care. We'll continue in this way for a few more moments, just inviting in as many benefactors as you like. Nice and close so that you really feel held void, supported. And feel how this is in your body right now, in your heart, in your mind. These beings wish for you to be safe, for you to be well. They wish for you to be happy. 
And they wish for you to be free from suffering. See if you can allow yourself to feel these wishes. And as your heart, mind, awareness feels enlightened, brightened, buoyed by this care, we naturally want to offer this out into the world to others, to be kind and change the world. And so you can begin by offering this back to your benefactors, the ones in your life now, the ones in your life from the past, wishing them safety, wellness, happiness, peace, freedom from suffering. So this might come for you uh, with words, wishes, in the silence of your heart. Or it might just be the felt experience of emanating, connecting, wishing, offering, A few moments of silence here to continue with that. Feel how this offering is unconditional from you. And it's without attachment. It's just freely offered metta, loving kindness. Maybe expressions of gratitude and heartfulness. Kindness. And now you can choose to just stay with this, resting in this reciprocity of relationship with benefactors, receiving and offering metta. Or if you like, you could choose to extend beyond this category of beings, of benefactors. And then begin to include people you don't know, people you have difficulty with and challenges with, perhaps even ill will. You don't need to force anything. You see what feels comfortable and natural for your heart.
as we feel supported by this well wishing from those that we know and from many that we don't know there's wishes for your well-being coming from beings that you've never met and so we too offer this heartfulness to all beings all beings filling our heart in all directions May you be safe. May you be well. May you be happy. May you be peaceful. May you be free from suffering. All beings, seen and unseen, near and far. Young and old. Unborn, born, deceased. Ones that we easily let into the heart and ones that we exclude from the heart. We cultivate our deepest intention to be kind and change the world. And as we hear these three bells, hearing them as reverberations resounding in all directions with these wishes. Thank you for your practice and allowing ourselves to feel supported and buoyed in times of overwhelm and grief and fear so that we can continue to act and speak and intend to be agents of kindness in this world. Um, and uh, just for a reminder for folks that follow on the YouTube channel uh, for weekly postings, there won't be a, a recording next week. I'm going on a little self-retreat. Okay, so thank you for joining us.